One of the things people need to understand is from a technical point of view, this is actually straightforward. There are a lot of details to it, but it's actually known quite well now in detail how central banks could eliminate the zero lower bound. If you handle paper currency as we do now, that earns an interest rate of zero, and of course there's some storage costs, but it's very difficult to have an interest rate below minus 1% without people saying, let me put my money in the paper currency under the mattress, buried in the backyard, in the coffee can. That's, of course, a very big problem for banks if you do that, because then they, they don't have any depositors. It would mean that interest rates in the economy, in fact, wouldn't go much below, say, minus 1%. And so the central bank isn't getting the job done. And, and that's a big problem because if you'd had a minus 4% uh, interest rate uh, throughout 2009, I think the U.S. economy would have had a very strong recovery by then. And so people worry about the effects of negative interest rates on savers. But the thing I, I would say is negative rates for a few quarters is much better than zero rates for years. 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and it could easily go throughout 2015. Although negative interest rates sound scary, minus 4% for one year is a lot better than zero for, for all of those years. Central banks around the world are coming to appreciate that from a technical point of view, it's quite possible to remove the zero lower bound simply by action at the cash window of, of the central bank. You know, if interest rates in general were negative 2%, you might worry that people would do massive paper currency storage and earn zero. It's actually straightforward to interrupt that arbitrage. And what you do is you have a very small paper currency deposit fee starting at zero at the cash window of the central bank and then you gradually increase it. So in the example I gave where in the US in 2009 your target rate, your Fed funds rate would be minus four percent but in that situation I would recommend also having what I'd call a paper currency interest rate at minus four percent. You achieve that by having this paper currency deposit fee at the cash window of the central bank very gradually increasing over the course of the year from zero to four percent. And then after that, if you have recovery, you don't need to go any further than that. At those rates, you wouldn't see, it at, you wouldn't see this um, effectively the exchange rate of cash at the retail shops. I mean, if you are a retailer, you now are getting 97 cents, 98 cents, 96 cents on the dollar when people pay with credit cards or debit cards. If you got 96 cents on the dollar when they paid you cash and then took that cash to the bank, that would just be a wash between whether you accepted credit card or cash. And given their willingness to accept, in effect, less from credit card payments now, you could probably go a little bit further. Although the negative interest rates themselves, I think, uh, would be uh, you know, politically quite salient. The additional things that need to be do done at the cash window of the central bank in order to make those possible are not that big an addition. My prediction would be that this will happen because quantitative easing was every bit as controversial as this will be, and, and yet central banks did the quantitative easing. Going back further in time, going off the gold standard was very controversial, and yet central banks went off the gold standard. Once one central bank does it, it's much easier for other central banks to say, look, it's been done successfully over there. So I would bet on the zero lower bound, in fact, beginning to be seen as something that's really a policy choice rather than a law of nature. I mean, that's obviously true, but people will understand that much more. Removing the zero lower bound is incredibly valuable because without the zero lower bound, central banks can really stabilize economies. When central banks can do their job, uh, then the economies have been historically quite stable and we can return to what economists call the great moderation if we do remove the zero lower bound.